Hey, what's up? We should be live. I'm going to test it out real fast to make sure I can hear myself. And we will get started. Today we're going to paint. And after a long time we haven't painted. There we go. I hear myself too. <laughs> so we can get started. And that's what we're going to paint. After a long time I haven't painted. I just want to open it up on my end uh, to make sure. And let me show you my face here. Um, <clears throat> I want to open it up on my phone because... Uh, this time I'm using OBS so that I can actually stream pro properly, which means I don't uh, I don't see our comments as easily as I usually do. So I'm just gonna lower the volume, put that in front of me so that I can see uh, the live chat. So thank you so much. Hey James, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you Christine. I hope everyone's doing super well. Hey April. Uh, so what we're gonna do today, as I mentioned, is paint. Now it's gonna be very fun. Because what I have for you today um, is a couple of reference photos. I want us to work on how to simplify skies and trees, which are things that <laughs> give hell to many people. So this is, uh, oh, am I quiet? Let me see. I'm not sure. I'll check why. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. It says the input is just my microphone, which should be good. <laughs> <laughs> so let me know if everyone has that same issue worst case try and uh, increase the volume we'll see if that works because maybe I have the computer a little more far away from usual um, because I have a big big cardboard thing here because we're gonna paint two scenes today and I'm actually gonna let you choose the second one uh, I hope everyone's doing well let me give you a bit of a background on why we're gonna paint these scenes uh, and also then we'll see who's in the chat and what's up uh, so I had uh, a critique session with Hank um, and uh, he wanted me to try and paint uh, and Hank let me know if you're here um, he wanted me to try and paint something of his and kind of see how I would approach it uh, and I just want to make sure that I see it here um, I want to open up uh, Hank's painting and I want to point out a few things I would improve. So basically, it's going to be almost like a live critique, but then it's going to be followed up by actually painting uh, the scene. So I'll have to go to my work folder and then grab from the uh, private lessons folder. That's the one thing I forgot to prepare. So, but here we go. Now I'll find it. Uh, his painting of this particular one. Um, don't I have it here? Okay, give me just one second, but it, it's going to be entertaining. So I see Karen in the chat. Tom, you're about 10% of another YouTube video I just had on for reference. I'll crank it up now. Oh, man, that's terrible. Um, hmm. I don't know why that is, you know. I can try and transfer the audio to the camera, but then the quality is going to be really bad. Let me try and increase it on my end. Uh, and don't be surprised if it goes up. So fair warning, one second. Hmm. Uh, Maybe now it decreased it. Who knows? Let me know if now it's worse. I, I don't know. I haven't had a, an audio issue in a while now, actually. Um, let me let me listen to myself here for a second. Yeah, that's quite low. I'm actually not sure why. I'm using OBS as I used to in the past. Um, better sound. Okay, so I'm going to increase it one second. I don't know why it was a minus seven something. Uh, okay, okay. So I'm gonna leave it like that for now, uh, unless someone else uh, raises any complaints and then we'll figure it out. I don't know why it was lower. I, I didn't touch that volume meter. Um, so yeah, here we go. Got it, red country barn. Uh, so I'm just gonna save it because there's a lot we can learn from here and a lot of very common mistakes that it's just sometimes hard to uh, to tell when you're in the middle of painting, it's always a challenge. So you have a beautiful scene here, two barns, the sky is very, very atmospheric in, in a way, um, just because it's so, you know, there's a lot going on there. Uh, and when I look at this, I really think, uh, what can I make of this? How can I make this a painting? Not just a scene that I recreate exactly as I see it, but what modifications and changes I can make to turn this into something that's very pleasing to the eye, right? And something that people will have fun looking at. Of course, this file is super heavy, so I'm gonna make it smaller. Um, and you'll get to see uh, the original, which is, by the way, great work, right? But uh, there's always uh, a lot one can improve. 
Yeah, okay, good, very good. So I'm gonna open it up. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Why can't I find it? That's a nightmare. How to simplify, etc., etc. There we go. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Sorry about that. So here is uh, the the painting. So a couple of things, right? How do we turn this thing into a full scene that speaks and communicates and uh, and is interesting for the viewer? So I actually like uh, Hank's crop. Uh, I like how you did it. Uh, the one thing I would actually try and paint it in the same orientation, but I'm going to change some things in it. One of the main things that jump to my attention is how the sky is just not dark enough and you can bring out so much of the snow on the houses, on the barn, sorry, uh, and on the ground, make it look so much more um, lively and shiny and even, you know, blinding in a way, in a good way. Um, I do want to show more of the bottom. I'm going to challenge myself to figure out how to portray that properly, but don't get distracted by details. Everyone who's watching this, not just you, Hank, don't get distracted by the details. It's actually about the big shapes and we're going to try and locate those big shapes in just one second as I start drawing this. Now, so let me make this a little smaller here, just kind of as a small reference so that we can remember it for later. Uh, and let's see who is in the chat from the beginning. Uh, Tom, that's funny. Hey, Laura, how are you doing? Hey, Patricia. Uh, hey, the Aragon. No, no. <laughs> and Louis, how are you doing? Caitlin, Karen, Amro, White Reza, Ellen, uh, Louis again. Uh, was good since the stream. Oh, thank you. I don't know why it's it's a bit low, but yeah. Uh, Lily Bay, better audio. Thank you so much. Delia, how are you doing? Uh, looking forward to the topic. Yes, yeah, sorry about that, Amro. Hopefully, that's a little bit better now. So let's get to it. Now I'm gonna draw the scene real quick. I have it open here on my end. So first we're just gonna have to figure out where the snow is. And uh, it's actually about the middle, which I like for this particular um, composition because, and let's see, just as you can see this well. Yeah, okay, we're good, we're focused. Um, I think middle is good here, why? Because I wanna show a bit of the details below, but I also wanna show a lot of the sky. Uh, so this is why it works well. However, let me make a small change here. Uh, I'm gonna grab my eraser. Actually, let's show more of the sky, okay? Uh, so a couple of things. The middle would work well for this composition, actually, but I'm thinking let's reduce some of the, some of the details in the snow itself. I don't know why. My instinct, you know, I started halfway and now I'm like, mm, maybe not. So. Sometimes I cannot explain exactly how these things work, but I just something like a spidey sense told me to stop and try and do it differently. So let's do that. Uh, thank you, uh, Crystal Martin. Happy to have you here. Uh, hey, John, how are you doing? So yeah, so we're going to put the two barns. Uh, now, I like to start these just by placing a blobby kind of shape that tells me approximately where the object is. So I'm trying to get almost like an envelope around it. And that way I can make sure that it all fits, right? Because very often things just don't fit. And then I can start thinking about the composition. So I would actually like to change it up a bit, make one of them bigger, right? So in the in the painting, uh, Hank, you did, you really followed them, which is good. They're shaped, very accurate. But I would like to break the balance and maybe try and shift it towards this being a little taller. So here's one. And that's going to be something like that. Don't worry, we'll get to painting real soon here. It's going to be, I think, a fairly loose uh, work. So I may attempt to do a bit of a slower one if time allows uh, in private, that is. And then the other side, and then we have one, right? Maybe a little lower like that. Now for the second one, I'm gonna leave the shape pretty much the same, but we're gonna make it taller, just to break that pattern a bit. And then here's where the roof begins. So it's gonna have, and look, you can use this kind of a triangular shape and then figure out, okay, this goes up like this, and this goes up like that. And kind of try and have a simpler shape to build upon if that's too complex. And I think it looks okay now. 
and then we're gonna go here drop this a bit and and maybe it's exaggerated and doesn't make sense like physically maybe barns just aren't that tall and it makes zero sense but i'm fine with that just for the sake of artistic license we're gonna break that uh pattern this sticks out a bit this has to be like that we have this line here this kind of little invisible line there looks a little edited probably censored the text that was up top there and now we can start thinking about the composition so i actually really like this thing that runs over here this i don't know what it is a ditch or something that has some plants on it and we have to start thinking about like how will we lead the viewer in so we could go for another fence that kind of does this zigzaggy pattern i never thought i'd change it this much but you know what i like that kind of a thing so now at least we have a pathway that leads us to the scene right um and then we can keep this thing here this stump but we'll pay close attention now what people tend to do is use very unhealthy um what do you call that obstructions or um God, i forgot the word for it but having the stump reach exactly where that fence is right or exactly where it is or exactly this part of the barn it's it's um i know how to say it in hebrew funny enough mishik uh, it's hashaka so they they touch each other and it's just doesn't make sense so what we're gonna do is have that stump thingy maybe be i'm gonna make this closer and then have it somewhere around here and then it can be between not below this one not above this one but somewhere between them in fact i could make it even lower or higher than both maybe i could get it up to here even but we'll figure that out and then this is a snow snowy base and here we have a bunch of foliage that we will have to figure out right but before we get to those details i want you to pay attention to a couple of things even though this is a very overcast cloudy scene um i still want to convey i still want us to be able to focus on the big shapes tangent that's right thank you so much teetle beetle <laughs> forgot i keep forgetting tangent tangential yeah but uh, there's actually a different word i wanted to say initially but yes you're right about that it's tangent um yeah maybe yeah tangent overlap i guess because if it overlaps you know, whatever <laughs> you get it you get it you you understood everyone so so that's good um what was i gonna say oh yeah, yeah big shapes pay attention to how under the sheds there is a big shape that i feel like was kind of missed in the painting um you can see it but i feel like there is we should connect it to something else so it's actually really good looking to have the snow which is white have some purple and red and yellow tints to it showing that it reflects light from other objects and then we can connect it maybe to this ditch here and figure out the rest maybe maybe i'll even throw in kind of a mild shadow in the foreground honestly i'm not sure now as for the wash and the painting the smoothness is very important with watercolor and i feel like that's a big aspect that requires improvement this could be due to uh, the paper or it could also be um, just not working fast enough or a wrong technique or something like that right so i'm going to show you what I believe is the better way to do this in terms of actually getting flow. Okay, so a couple of windows and details, and I think we are ready to go. Looks good, I think. I think it looks good. Now, one thing I would do is I kind of lost that angle, so let's tilt this one a little more, kind of like that. I don't even need to erase, but you know, just for clarity's sake, this goes here. This should be lower. I should have lowered it. That fence at the back, fence at the front. That I'm gonna wing. I have no idea exactly how I'm gonna paint it, but we'll get started. So I'm gonna start with a wash that covers everything that isn't snow. Uh, now you have to think a bit when you're attempting to do these washes. The sky looks really cool, and I do not want to overwork it. So I may even pre-wet, which I you know I don't do much of. Maybe we'll pre-wet the sky. And then we'll start putting in, uh, I think because the reds uh, and the blues here really neutralize each other, it may actually be a good idea to use French Ultramarine instead of Phthalo Blue. Phthalo Blue is definitely too strong here. Um, I'm going to use Ultramarine Blue. 
fill up the well here. Ultramarine blue is, and it's really fun to use paints out of the tube, but this one's a nightmare sometimes because it's so soft, but we'll see. Um, and then I have my peril in red if I really want to neutralize, but we'll figure that out. Um, so let me pre-wet the entire top of the paper. And we'll slowly figure this one out. Uh, I have no idea if I'm going to create really something decently good. Uh, it's very hard to, you know, watercolor it has it a life of its own. And the first attempt is always uh, a challenge. But just know at home that you can do multiple attempts, right? You don't have to just settle for one. And here's what I'm going to do, actually. And you can see where I pre-wet the, the, the paper. I'm going to allow it to go into the actual barn's walls. Not the roof, but the walls. Because they're going to be darker than snow. So we'll, we'll kind of let it flow into there, okay? Just not, um, just not into the actual roof. There we go. But it's, it's still quite loose, so don't worry too much about it. Now, I'm gonna start mixing in. So I have some blue and I have some of my quinacridone and actually let's just spray a bit to wake, awaken my palette. Now, if I really wanna mute, I'll add my perlin. That's really going to get us close to what we see in the reference photo. So let's start and see where it takes us. And I'm actually going to have to wet it again because this is not wet enough. It started to dry by the time I was talking and mixing. Or I can just spray. No, let's just spray. Very good. Now the top areas seem a little more neutral, so I'm gonna add a bit of red, a bit of yellow, sorry, to neutralize the purple. And here where the highlight is, I'm gonna of course preserve that. Try at least, you see there's a bit of flow. I can just do this and reduce it a bit, but I actually like it. So this is where I may allow the painting to kind of do what it does and paint, um, paint itself. Which is something, it's a, it's a good, healthy thing to try and do, right? But the one thing I, you know, I don't care if I don't get the exact pattern of the sky, and it's very likely I won't, especially if I'm painting this loosely. Um, but one thing I do care about is that I have flow in it. I cannot afford to lose the flow. That's the one thing I will not compromise on, okay? So just know that. As long as I have flow in it, I'm good. And I actually like this look. It's really cool. And then as it starts to uh, dry just a bit near the top, I can start introducing some darker, thicker mixes. Very important to have it be thick enough, otherwise it's not gonna last on the paper. trying to have some kind of a random shape among the clouds. And then this cloud here is pretty neutral. And again, I'm not trying to paint it exactly as I see it because that's not really possible. But I'm trying to maintain some shape of clouds and have it make sense. I'm gonna add a bit of neutral tint here. I'm working way too slowly. Should work much faster. big cloud here. I'm gonna help this move a bit. A section. Oops. Lost my spray bottle which is crucial for this process. So we'll get through here and darken kind of like that. Now I do know the trick, a trick that could help us here. Uh, lifting with a paper towel. I'm not gonna use a wet one this time, or maybe I should just give it a try because we did talk about that last time. But I think I do want to create some hard edges. So let me try and see what we can get to. And then here, let's try and, and wet it. I never tried it 
This seems like an interesting opportunity. Okay, yeah, just to make it look a little more abstract, I actually really dislike this guy right now. We may just do another attempt. I really dislike how it turned out. I don't know why it turned out that way. Uh, but let's see, let's see if we can salvage it. Worst case, we're gonna scrape this one and just do another version. You'll have to see me, uh, you may have to see me drawing this entire thing again, uh, but that's okay. I, yeah, I, I really overworked it. I'm like, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna try for it to be exactly the same. And then I ended up really trying for it to be the same. So anything I'm gonna do right now is just gonna be not good. So let me think, um, how would I just redo this? Cause I see the shapes and I'm like, I can try and imitate them. I just don't like the way they turned out here. Here's what we're gonna do. Okay, we're gonna continue with this one. I'm gonna help this whole thing move a lot more and then we'll even flip it the other way around. Cause I do want to show you, I don't want you to give up on painting easily and I do think, like, I know I can do something with it. That's the, that's the bottom line. I know I can just turn it into something. So that's what we're gonna do, okay? I'm gonna play around with it. We'll get a few abstract patterns in the sky, which I'm fine with. Uh, and then maybe we'll soak back up some of these, some of the water here, just a bit. And again, I always say, in the grand scheme of things, once it dries, and if you have clear shapes, you're gonna be good. So let's, Let's live, let's eat our own dog food and, and actually live off our own advice. So I'm just gonna continue this one and we'll see where it takes us. So again, I said, I'm gonna connect it completely with the bonds and I can later on add another wash uh, that darkens whatever needs to be darkened, okay? Uh, so that's not really a problem if I have to darken this later again, but what is important is that I get the flow now, not later. Okay, let's lift back some of this. This should continue all the way down here. And hopefully at the very least, we will get a strong enough of a uh, contrast with the ground and snow, right? Now look at what I'm doing here. There's a lot of details on the barns, walls, and I'm just ignoring them. Because if I now start to try and attempt and render every small detail, I'll never see the end of it. And all of these blues, it's much better to just have flow, okay? Now, as we move down here, just I want to divert your attention to the fact that this was one wash, right? And don't worry about that chimney, by the way, we're gonna paint it back uh, later on. But this is one wash and that's a big part of the beauty, get things down in one wash. I love doing it this way. And then as we get to the snow, I'm gonna to switch to a more uh, neutral mix. So let's add a bit of yellow there. And I do want to be deliberate with what I'm doing right now. So we have to think, right? So the shadow under it, and that's a shape I do want to convey. And sorry that I'm not reading the, the chat. I need to really focus here. I'm gonna to switch to a bit of a cooler. Okay, good, you can see me well. And let's, oops, that was almost an accident. I'm gonna lift back some of this because there's a lot of excess paint that's gonna drop down immediately as soon as I expand the wash. Uh, and that's not gonna serve us in this instance. And then we're gonna start cooling a bit. Let's see what we can get here. With a bit of coolness. Oh, I forgot this wall completely, that's funny of me. So let's start blue here or neutral and go down with the red. I'm gonna do this. It's funny, I forgot it. Like that, then we'll go back to our beautiful Perlin. Red. I just see so many people giving up way, way too soon on their painting. So don't, don't be that person. Now give it some time. You may discover that it turns out really, really nicely. More blue. I want to pull some parts of it, maybe especially the edges here, maybe here as well. And we're going to get a soft edge on the right side, okay? Like so. 
And I'm going to add a bit of yellow. Let me switch over to the small brush. I want to show you near the edge of the shape, I'm going to add a bit of warmth, okay? To some areas. So around here. I think it's going to look good. And you see, as all of my paintings, this one's very rooted in primary col uh, primary colors because I like them. It's just that the choice of primary colors I use changes. And I'm actually gonna... Okay, let's smooth... So look at what I'm doing here. I'm gonna smoothen that edge to the left, like so. But I'm gonna keep a few hard edges to, to indicate that it's actually snow. And it's not just gonna be a gradual, gradual transition, a gradient from top to bottom. Let's blend the, these areas around that fence or whatever. And then look at what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna connect these parts that went down lower into that ditch I talked about earlier. And I think what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna do something interesting. I'm just now being kind of led by instinct, to be honest with you. I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna extend this down, whatever this is. Whatever comes along for the ride, I'm gonna extend it a bit. This we can kind of smoothen out as well. This I like. This shows like there's snow down in the front. And I'm going to include this stump here because it is a part of that. Like so. Let's let them blend together completely. And because there is a lot going on in the foreground, I'm going to make kind of use of that. I'm almost creating an underpainting for the foliage. So that the foliage, once I put it, those little, you know, branches and flowers that survive the snow, they're not going to just be put against a completely white background. They're going to be put against something that looks, I think, a little more interesting and it's going to make the contrast make a lot more sense. Now look at what I'm doing down below. I'm going to cool my wash ever so slightly. Again, that ultramarine right out of the tube. So aggressive, it immediately shows. Uh, I'm going to... Dumb it down a bit, and not that strong. Add a bit of maybe the muted red. A bit more of that blue. Just wanted a bit neutralized. So here we go. And that, folks, is going to be our first watch. <laughs> if we somehow manage to make something out of it. So, and let me show you just how wet it still is. Let me go back to my angle. You see how wet it is? And a lot of granulation. So that's gonna be our first wash. This is gonna dry quite light. I know it looks dark. It's gonna dry quite light. And then we can put in the walls of these uh, barns, properly darken them. But I would, you know, sometimes, so that's the thing. Sometimes starting the painting, you will, you just have no idea how you're gonna continue it. And you have to kind of let it carry you. So that's one thing I want to, to convey to you, right? If you feel stuck or you're unsure of what you're doing, let the painting like get started. A lot of the time, the motivation and clarity, knowing what to do, will come with starting the painting. I'm gonna lift back a bit of snow there. See, looks a little better. There we go. Now I'm gonna read your comments. I have no idea what you're saying. Let me get my phone here up close. Um, <clears throat> well, let's see. Oh, a lot of people. Okay, good, good, good. So, uh, John, welcome again. John, how are you doing? Hope everything is well, my friend. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you so much, Christine, uh, for encouraging people to like the video. That really helps. So if you can take a moment, like the vid, um, it helps more people reach it. Uh, Alex says, good evening. John Horizon at midpoint, that's brave. Yeah, and I lowered it. Vespa, good morning from Gran Granite Bay. I don't know if you say Granite, Granite Bay, California. What a lovely way to start my day. Awesome, that's, thank you for joining me. Uh, James L. Baker, highly running. All greetings from sunny London, cold but bright. Petra, how are you doing? Hello from Germany. Oh, still at work. Hopefully you'll finish soon. It uh, should be quite, the time to finish work soon, I think. Um, uh, hui, uh, hui Joyce, hey Joyce, how are you? Hi from Hong Kong. Uh, 
Uh, welcome aboard. Thank you, Tito, for the tangent. Uh, James, so I think I missed what was said, but did you mention that the picture reference was painted by a student? Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, he did a really good job. So now we're uh, we're doing a more extensive kind of how I would simplify it. And I'm, I'm actually looking at this line here and I'm, I'm considering blurring it. I don't know if the original reference photo was censored, but if I just do this, and I know that's famous less words, we may be able to create a mist effect of like the fog comes down into the roof, right? So that could be a fun little edge to play around with. Just like that, just a bit of water, whoosh. and we we should have done it with this one really because that's what that one's higher, so it it's more likely to be in the clouds or in the fog. But yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, Louis says, "What kind of pencil lead do you use?" This is a uh, just a simple Pilot O point five lead. So it's this, but in point five, very simple. Just same one, um, and then just uh, the cheapest mechanical pencil you can think of. Um, uh, Tittle, what paper? That's gonna be Arsh. Arsh, um, cold press. Yep, cold press. Uh, and 300 grams. Uh, Dagi says, greetings from Germany, my big weakness drawing. John, thank you, I like your bracelet. That may actually made it for me. Uh, Tittle, is the paper tilted? Yes, it is. It's at about 20 degrees, uh, the paper. Uh, yeah, it looks dark, I know. Just give it a few seconds, you'll see it's gonna, it's gonna look all right. Uh, James, what if you blotted the sky with a napkin? Yep, yeah, we tried going for that, but my timing was a little off. Um, it's funny how wet and wet still to this day eludes me. Um, I ended up going way too saturated, as you can see, the, the photo is, is much more gray. Uh, we could actually do another attempt just to the sky, but I always end up, you know, unless I'm super focused, hyper like on it, I'll always end up either overworking or not getting the exact transitions as I want. And that's fine. Um, if I try to paint it in private, maybe I can get to something that's a little closer. Uh, not to blame you, for it, but it's just like that. Um, Zaki, yes, I used a lot of wet and wet. Uh, tried at least to make it work. Uh, John says, I think this guy looks really interesting after you gave it a mist and moved it to the barns. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not. You have to, you have to have that courage at some point and just say, no, nope, I'm going to get it done. Um, and I'm going to continue, push it till the end. Uh, hey, Daisy, how are you doing? Uh, James says, this is how I truly learn. We know how amazing you are as an artist, but it's the com commentary while you paint and the mistakes that you admit you don't like. Yeah. Definitely. These are true lessons and I much appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is why I enjoy the live streams. It's kind of like a stream of consciousness for me and I can really understand things a little better about how I paint and see my own mistakes later on. And doing it live while talking and explaining really reveals a lot of the thought process. And by revealing the thought process, that actually changes it too, which is the, that problem. It, it's never going to be the same as painting in private, right? But that's the thing, you gotta roll with the punches with waterfall. You have to. Uh, Alex says, now I'm thrilled how this is gonna end up. Thank you. Uh, Monica, Haley, Ron, and Chad, thank you so much for being here. Jersey Maid and Haley, Ron, everyone just came on from Saratoga Springs, New York. Can't wait to see what you do with that big red spot in the middle. Yeah, we'll see about that. I think once it dries, and, and I still it's still wet, right? I, I need to use the hair dryer and it will flatten it, and the colors will be a little lighter and duller. And then you'll see how this all does not matter. Um, it really is going to play a very secondary role here. Uh, hey, Paul, how are you doing? Good morning. Olivier, how are you, Liron? Lovely lesson of never give up. Real artists never search the easy way. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Luis, thanks for the reply in the comments. Thank you. Thank you so much, Luis. I think you... Have you emailed me before? Um, I suspect you have. Uh, meow, meow. I'm learning watercolor for the past two weeks now, but don't know how to draw because the tutorials that show... They're already drawn and are just gonna show the water. Yeah, and I try to skip the drawing stage for paintings where I really just want it to be about the watercolor, but I do have a few uh, drawing videos you wanna check out. Uh, Adam, did you stretch the paper? Nope. Uh, Alberto Garcia, hi from Buenos Aires. I'm, uh, I'm progressing a lot with your lessons and tips. Yeah, that's cool, thank you. Very happy to hear. Do you have any tips how to make the paper not bulge? Uh, as you can see here, the paper is completely buckled up. 
and that is perfectly fine. We're gonna dry it now with a hair dryer, so I'm gonna have to mute myself for a few moments here and you'll see how it's gonna flatten. Right now it is very curvy. See? It's a bit hard to see, but it is. So now let me mute and I'm gonna be back in just a second. So I want you to notice one thing, right? I made a lot of mistakes and my technique was uh, not fully on point, right? I could have done a lot of things better. But notice how that's completely mitigated by having a plan and knowing in advance exactly what I'm gonna paint. So I knew that the sky is gonna blend right into the walls of the barn, right? Had I not had that plan, it would have influenced the look of the painting a lot. And by the way, this is one of the most extreme granulations I've ever gotten, I think. Mm. Um, but it would have influenced the plan. It would have influenced the end result. So you have to have a plan and know exactly what you're going to paint. Even if it's a bad plan, it's still better than no plan, very often. So I did allow myself to improvise from here and below because I was a little flustered by what was going on wet and wet. Um, but... I did know generally what I wanted to do. And I want you to, uh, I'm gonna make the original painting larger. So one big thing to pay attention to is the flow, right? Uh, a lot of it, in my opinion, doesn't flow enough. That's one thing to work on, especially the sky. So even though my sky is a big mess, at least it has flow in it, right? It's, it's pretty flowy. And we even ended up with something that could be considered as clouds and you know, whatnot. The, the, my actually one, um, complaint for myself with how this turned out so far and the camera exaggerates it a bit but it's too blue that's the one thing that bugs me it's a little too blue uh, now you can get in the trap of oh I'm gonna glaze a bit of yellow over it make it try and make it a little more neutral but I would rather not touch this guy but even in the parts where I thought I'm neutralizing it it wasn't enough so that's something to pay attention to that again the ultramarine is very aggressive um, so you have to watch out for that but as long as I have flow and I have the shapes right, I'm happy. Now, right now, this doesn't feel light enough because it has nothing to contrast against and we're gonna fix that now once we put in uh, the barn's details. It's actually not much darker than, uh, than where we're at currently. Um, so we just need to add a bit uh, and a bit of strength to the top, right? So uh, one thing that I see here some of the lines for that barn wall are a little too um, horizontal. You have to tilt them a bit because here's what's important to understand. Very simple perspective one on one, 101, sorry. Uh, this point is closer to us than that point. So what happens is these two lines have to have this kind of an angle, not parallel. And you have them hang parallel and it can you can feel it, it's too parallel. So, so think about it this way, right? So this is the barn. Now, the more we look at it, let's say from the front, the more we're gonna see of this side and less of that side and the more extreme that effect is gonna get. So let me show you on another piece of paper. So let's say we're walking to the front here. What we'll end up with, what we may end up with is something that looks like uh, maybe more like this, right? We've rotated it. And these lines, notice how, how much they're not parallel, right? Now, I did this very mildly here, but it's still not parallel lines. And I can show you, I can prove this to you. I'm just gonna use this ruler this piece of paper can you see not parallel very important I would say that 
even these lines shouldn't be parallel, right? It's, it's mild, but it's still important. So just a little thing on that. That's kind of a critique for the drawing. And these things are noticeable. I can tell immediately. Uh, now, I have some inaccuracies too, right? But uh, I think in that regard, I did a fair job. So we're going to get started on the walls. I think I want to give it just a 20 more seconds of hair dryer. It's not fully dry because it was very wet, the paper. So give me just a few more seconds. So the one thing I'm concerned with, I'm using a, bit, a different brand of tape and it's not so good with the hair dryer. It kind of uh, loosens it a little too much, but we'll, we'll be okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to attempt to get these all in one go as well, starting from the top. So let's use what we have. That's how I like to start mixing, by the way. That's a mixing tip for you. I like to first mix whatever I have here and then try to create from that what I want. Okay. So let's use first what we have, get something going, and then we can get started. So what I see here is a fairly rusty kind of brown red. Um, and it starts quite dark up top and then it lightens up. I'm gonna use my ultramarine blue very carefully. Add a lot of yellow and sometimes you'll just have to use test paper to ask yourself, is this neutral? Is the color, is it gray or am I diluting myself and it's purple? Um, so I'm going to add a bit more yellow to it. It's funny, I see it as gray, but on the camera it really looks more purple. I don't know why. Uh, but in any case, yep. Could be exaggerating it a bit. Now, from this gray, we're still going to want more red. And we're still going to want it to be darker. So let me add a bit of everything here. Right, this looks good. I'm, I, I'll actually add just a bit of red. And we can work with that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a little careful this time. Okay. So maybe I'll talk less. So that's going to be the dark part. And here, look at what I'm going to do now. And add a bit more water and red and I'm gonna help this wash continue down leaving a few highlights for the snow on the or just the, the material of the windows now it's very important as you do this to not let the painting go too muted and boring I want it to still be nice and colorful in a way. We have this white gap here that I'm not sure what it is. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna paint over my imaginary windows. And then here we're gonna have a serious gap for the snow on the rooftop, which we can uh, bring back with some opaque paint later. But what's more important to me in this case is the, the flow. I want to make sure that I still have good flow. I'm actually going to add a bit of heroin here. I want a bit of a stronger red, I think. I'm going to connect these and bring this white back later on. And I'm work around the doors and windows and stuff. There are two main windows, and I'm just going to work around them. So that way, I have a building in the front that's a little more saturated, and this one kind of goes to the back just a bit, very gently. And I can go ahead and put some more. I'm going to just use neutral tint here. I really want this to be more neutral. Just add a touch of dark here. That. That's going to glaze nicely with the... Um, it's going to fit in nicely with the snow up top later. And I think we'll let this dry a little more before we start adding 
Uh, more darks there. Just get this side of the building with a few hints for the windows. A lot of it we can do later with opaque paint, so we don't have to worry that much. And then here's what I'm gonna do. Sometimes an abrupt change is, doesn't look as graceful. And by the way, I messed it up completely, the shape here. Should have gone, I'm gonna take the risk. Should have gone from high to low like that. May get some unevenness here, but that's fine. Um, and I don't want just an abrupt change into the snow, so I'm gonna soften some areas like that. I'm gonna allow the wall to go into the ground in a way. You don't have to, but I think it's best in, in this example, in this painting to do it. Maybe even add a bit of blue to that flow here. Should have left that. Should have left that as it was earlier. Good. So I have no idea where we're at. Yeah. Okay. We're good. Uh, and now I'm gonna start working on that fence or something that runs across. I'm wondering, should I have the lower sections, which which actually you did a good job, I think, uh, darker or not? Because that that brings me into overwork, and I already have. Quite a bit of it. Um, let's try. Let's try it out. It's still wet enough, and I can actually. I don't know if I want to completely flip this upside down. That bit of a risk, but let's at least flatten it out. Let's see. This process is uh, giving us a run for our money, as they say, or however you say. It. It's definitely not. A very simple one and it's a scene I don't know if I would have chosen to paint myself that's the thing right it's always harder we all have our comfort zone scenes it's definitely not one for me so but uh, it's important to at least know how to try and handle these kinds of scenes right if there's one thing that it's very important, it's kind of an overarching principle, is that flow, right? Maintaining it no matter what. Even if you screw up a lot of the details, at least the flow is there. Yeah, so that's good. So now we're gonna start putting in some of the foliage. Now, I do want to approach this in a somewhat abstract way. I don't want to go individual grass blades. I like to do an experiment and see if, if I can get the effect, you see? Try it out. So I think it could work. We'll get this kind of line of foliage that way. And maybe it's a little too dark, so let's mix it up with some more of that liquid, and then dry it so that we get the individual um, leaves. That's always a challenge, knowing like how to how to balance dry consistency of paint with um, with a desired effect, right? Uh, but I think that works. And we can use that opportunity to add a bit of it back there, but remember if it's more back, it has to be smaller blades and kind of smaller details, right? There's this bunch of logs or whatever. Just to hint that there's something going on there. And then let's see, let's get a bit of... So that's now it's... What I imagine for this is to be a fence. Um, not not a ditch or something, with not a road. It's not a ditch, it's probably a road with foliage to the sides. Foliage, you know, like these weird little plants. Um, so I want to make it a bit loose. So my plan will probably be drop that thing here and then just put a bunch of these. And the important part is to still treat them as one wash. So that's what I want to show you. Let me show you. A very common thing people do is they just draw a lot of individual branches. More water. 
and I don't want you to draw individual ones. I want you to really think about binding them together. So we're going to have a lot of this kind of looseness going. Yes. But I have to figure out how that fits into the overall composition, which isn't simple. Let me look at this from here. Yeah, that's interesting. So I went really red and purple in the colors there. Um, we're going to go fairly muted here. We're gonna go gray here, and in here I will really try to have it gray with a hint of yellow, and that's gonna balance out the whole thing. That's what I'm thinking right now. So you can't delay it forever, you have to start. So I'm gonna start mixing. Sometimes if you're you know, scared of a wash or you're unsure of how to start something, just start mixing. Start mixing the colors and figuring out, does this make sense? Does this looks, look like something I'd want to incorporate in the painting? You know, I really like this combination of orangey red kind of thing. So maybe that's a good place to start. I'm not gonna try, this has a bit of warmth in it, but I'm gonna avoid it for now. Well, let's mix a bigger, bigger quantity here because I need, I need a lot of it because I don't know exactly what I'll do with it. It's funny. This is a very interesting process. And I'm going to ask you soon um, what process you want me to to do next, because I have two options. I wasn't sure which one to choose. I actually have one that I feel more comfortable with, uh, but I, I don't want that to... I don't want the decision to be based on that, so... Uh, let's go for it. Something like this. And then... I'm gonna get started. We'll see what happens here. I, I honestly have no idea. What I do know is that this part has to be neutral and 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 yellow. Neutral and yellow, not purple. Get a bit of that texture there. And this entire section cannot take away too much off the focal point. It has to support it. So we're actually really close to just finishing it. Honestly, I feel like. Um, let's do a bit of smaller brush. Same mix, kind of. But again, even when I'm doing these seemingly individually, I'm still kind of connecting them, you see? still part of a bigger pattern and if you went too far you can just do this kind of let them soften up a bit but I think it's okay and uh, I'm gonna connect a few of these to the edge here to the bottom but notice how I'm not going too much from the bottom bottom of the painting and I feel like that will have a bit of a weird feel to it so we'll see this is a really engaging process for me like I, I have to be really with it. I can't. Let's switch to a small one. I can't really even begin to think about looking at the chat. So forgive me for that. And a bunch of these twigs here. Okay. I feel like I do need something to bind it to the bottom. I think this is the. That's something to show that it's bringing us into the scene. Now, one thing that may help put the foliage in its right place is actually in this a bit of delicate work, but we'll go for it. We'll figure it out. Right close to the edges, you can add what looks to be the flowers or whatever, but don't do it for every one of these. Just choose a few where it's visible. And that can kind of make it look like See how it, it makes the stems actually look like stems in a way? I hope that makes sense. And you can actually see these dots all across the near the top area, right? So yeah, quite a weird process, I would say, and if you just follow what you see. So we did a few changes. Um, I really like how it turned out, actually. I just wonder what would have been a more effective way of portraying the same thing either with fewer details or in a more 
I suppose... I don't know. Fewer actions, maybe, you know? Uh, but yeah. And I think we'll take a break here and, and try and reassess in just a few seconds. I'll, I'm gonna let it dry. Let's see what you're saying in the chat. It's a very interesting process. Like, when I look at it from a farm, and this really, the camera really exaggerates the reds and, and, and blues. It's actually quite similar to the original in many ways, even though it's vast, vastly different, right? I do have to rethink the decision to make this as tall. I think it would have looked better between those, like here. Like it kind of is in the rep in the original photo. Uh, but yeah, that's fine. Now look at also how this is much lighter, I think. Maybe a little lighter than the reference as well, because I don't want to pull all of our attention to the foreground. This is this plays a supporting role, funny enough. The the real focal point should still be this, right? Uh, so it just makes sense. We're gonna add a few of the windows and, and some stuff in just a few seconds. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see if there are any good questions. <clears throat> okay. Alex says, while I'm watching you, I'm also painting right now. Hopefully we both end up making beautiful masterpieces. Yeah, hopefully. Painters paint, but artists create. Yeah, the granulation is intense, Arisha. Um, what causes it? So I think it's just a lot of pigments. Um, I'm not sure, I never got it this aggressive. I think it's the ultramarine blue. Uh, it's quite granulating, if I'm not mistaken. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you, James, for the kind words. Yeah, I try to be as um, outward facing as I can and, and really share a lot of my technique and progress. Uh, sorry, Tanga, yeah, some people complain about the uh, voice. Uh, garden, if your grays are always purple, garden themed, um, try and add more yellow, and you may be using the wrong primary colors. Um, or you need to devote more time to mixing like I do here, actually. I needed the entire sky to be more like this, rather than this blue. Uh, Leah says, hi from Arkansas, it emboldens me to continue painting. When you speak of the things you perceive as mistakes, it makes you real. Almost like having a therapy or counseling. Yeah, definitely. Uh, hey, Alessandro, how are you? Hey Pam, there's a man on YouTube named Paul George who paints these types of skies a lot, has very few likes, but people who are interested might want to check him out. Paul George, cool. I'm gonna look him up. Paul George Waterfall. Um, there's another guy, I keep forgetting his name, but he's really good. Okay, I'm gonna look at Paul George, uh, Paul George later. There's another guy, I keep forgetting his name though, so sorry about that. I'll write it down later. Um, yeah, yeah, the color really fades with time, and that's good, that's good. So nothing you do, you can't mess the first wash up too badly, right? This, by the way, I like the, this transition better than this. Um, after giving color to the barn, the sky and roof are popping out. Yep, yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, that's the main idea, I think. Just the snow on the rooftops and the sky in the barn. But that's, that's like the main thing, that relationship between these three shapes, right? The rest... You could get rid of, honestly. Again, I could cut this here. Um, and maybe that means I should, by the way. Uh, you know what? I'll try, I'll, try and, I'll try and tie this in in just a second. I have an idea. Uh, Josephine, oh, should I miss the barn? Uh, good morning. Yeah, thank you for being here. You will see it uh, if you watch the replay. Elden, it's been a while since I've seen a ref that makes me want to pick up a brush. And does this, does this one make you want to do that? Um, when I paint grass, it becomes too thick. Use a thinner brush. That's, that's very common. That happens to me a lot. Um, born again farm girl I'm so excited you're doing my farm today <laughs> yeah that was just looking for the opportunity by the way if you do have uh, good pictures of your farm send them over I can paint them uh, hey Richard how are you John so where would you say the focal point is in the picture well it's where you choose it to be I feel like it might be where the barns meet because the post uh, points right to it yeah that's something around here I'm also gonna add a few highlights in a second I think the focal point is going to end up being right the, in the middle here because I'm going to put a white here. Um, 
I'm gonna continue in just a second. Oh, if you haven't purchased the wrong series class, you really don't need to. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Monica. Thank you, H. Um, ooh, thank you so much. So much kind words. I really appreciate it. Um, happy to be thinking out loud for you, uh, Vespa. Uh, maybe it's the camera on my screen, but I wish the sky would be more dramatic. No, I get it. I get it. Uh, it's missing some of that drama. Uh, once you added a fence post with the grass around it, it really made the foreground come to life. Sweet. Oh, thank you. Um, so yeah, we're gonna. I think we're gonna continue. Um, I am going to connect these two together because right now I feel they're not connected enough. So the way I'm usually approaching these stages is again based on a little bit of instinct, honestly. Um, I'm gonna add a bit of red to orange it just a little bit. So what I feel like, because this is a little lighter here, uh, it's kind of missing the connection. So I'm gonna, this is a bit of a high risk move, but I think I'll do it, I think I'll do it. We're gonna add a fence here. Something like that. I want to bring these two parts together. And I know the fence right now doesn't make it much sense but just give it a few seconds and hopefully it will see that at least pulls us in in a way and I'm gonna darken some parts of it it's really all about these uh, gentle balances mm, it's not always easy now here's the real important part I'm gonna connect these together like a like a you know a fence wood or something like that and that will hopefully kind of hint that we're going into the, the scene but every brush mark I put I have to ask myself again am I overworking is this too much you know um, and you have to know when to stop but I think so far we're kind of still okay maybe a little overworked but that's fine maybe around here I think that's a little better. And then we're gonna add some details right here to the front. I actually need to dry this a bit. So give me 20 seconds and I'll be back. Good. we have to pick up the pace because we have another painting and I do plan on doing another one so let me get my white gel pen and we're gonna just put in a few highlights this is the part that's the easiest in a way because you just see them and put them in so that's one and this I think is gonna end up being the focal point there's this thing here that I kind of moved to the side but we're gonna bring it back there's this chimney of course and I'm, I'm gonna add a bit of the darks in a second Sometimes the white gel pen decides to quit on me. It has such weird behavior sometimes, you know, there we go. Uh, a few of the windows here. But I'm kind of almost deliberately being loose with it. Like that. There we go. And then if you really want to, you can add a bit of highlights maybe on some of these uh, stumps here or whatever that is. This right here. There's a door way back there. Uh, and I actually want to stretch that out a little and add this line as well. And then we're going to add some darks and we will be done with this one. Uh, for better or worse. I may go back and do some improvements later or maybe just paint a new one. Um, just for the sky, I'm actually curious what's worth changing. If anything, really. Dark, 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 dark. Yeah, I think that's good. I think we'll call it, we'll call it done. I think for now. Let's rotate this and do another one. So here I need your help. 
Uh, and we can we can talk about the end result and remove the tape uh, in just a few seconds. So let me bring in to A and to B. So um, let me know which one you prefer, top or bottom. Um, both will require some editing because they're a bit strange. <laughs> Honestly, the thing that really bothered Hank was how to simplify the trees. And that's very apparent in the top one. The top one is very saturated. It's very unnatural. It's very edited to be a pretty picture, which means we'll probably change quite a bit if we paint it. The other one is more of an amateur taken photo, which is better in my opinion. And I'm, I don't mean amateur, just the light and shadow. It's less, not amateur, it's less edited, uh, more natural. So whichever you choose, I'm going to be fine with. You just let me know, top or bottom. I see Erica says bottom, we'll continue, bottom. Uh, and Hank, I think, I know you wanted help with the top one. So if, so I'm going to review the one I'm not going to do now, I'm going to send you an email about as we agree. Um, I like the perspective on the bottom. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. It's It has a very interesting composition to which we will change. Uh, Joyce says top. We'll let a few more answers flow in and then we'll kind of, I'll try and read the room. Right now we're tied almost. Uh, so we'll see, let me know what you think. Um, and I actually can't remove this without removing the tape here. So we'll, we'll finish those up together actually. Oh yeah, and I said I'll add a bit of that shadow. So while you let me know which one you prefer, I completely forgot that I need to add the chimney here. And look, you can take a risk now and decide I'm gonna darken, I'm gonna darken the sky, I'm gonna increase the drama, I'm gonna try and neutralize, I'm gonna make corrections, right? I invite you to do that. I'm not gonna do it now, but feel free to do that. The painting is not necessarily over. And if you saw, if you joined my course, you know that I always improve them. You know, and I do that a lot here on YouTube too. Uh, I like to improve my paintings after they're done too after I remove the tape even if I have something to improve. So yeah, that justifies that thing here. Top, top, 50-50, it's really 50-50, huh? Um, if it's gonna be 50-50, okay, bottom. Now I have to count now. Should do a poll on Twitter. So I'm gonna count for a second. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, you spoke, it's bottom. I think it's gonna be the bottom. Uh, yep, yep, definitely the bottom now. If any top fans wanna try their chance, now is the time, but I think it's gonna be the bottom one, which is, I don't know if it's easier for me, but it's more of a natural kind of scene, I guess. One thing to remember um, as I do these tutorials is if I actually sit down and work slowly on matching the colors, um, you can actually achieve a lot closer colors and that's how I do that for the for the paintings I do in private but um, but sometimes you don't have that kind of you know ability time patience so a lot of the colors end up differently so I could actually the top one is gonna be hard to mix the colors the bottom one is gonna be easier to mix them but still hard uh, if I don't focus just on that right Bottom hands, <laughs> bottom, bottom. Okay, I do see more bottom. Uh, so Hank, I'm just gonna send the top one for you in private. Uh, we're gonna do the bottom one. The bottom one's not easy too. So I'm gonna just get the, I should have while you talked about it, uh, I've gotten uh, Hank's version of it. Uh, sorry to anyone who's disappointed. Um, that's just life. And yeah, there we go. So. A couple of things. I'm gonna give Hank my critique of this one and then we'll paint it. Um, and you'll see in just one second, the same kind of advice that applied earlier to uh, the, the, the smoothness um, of the wash bothers me also here. Um, let's see. Export. JPEG. I don't know why I feel like with time I get worse in painting and talking at the same time. It's almost because I know more, I have to concentrate more, which doesn't make any sense. Um, it just size. 
Wait one second, I'm gonna make this a little more manageable for my streaming software. Uh, go. Good. So I'm gonna bring up the picture now, and you're gonna see. And we can soon get rid of the rest. Okay. So here is your version, Hank. We're gonna put that here. Let's get rid of um, this one, and we'll get rid of this one. Okay. So reference photo. So interestingly enough, some of the greens you did end up matching correctly. Uh, but okay, the drawing is relatively accurate here, which is good, and it's a tough angle, so way to go on that. Uh, the same issue with flow, that's gonna be my main comment, like the, the, so okay, imagine it's here, right? So the sky, of course, you didn't follow the colors you saw, which is great, and you told me you like to, to change it sometimes. Um, the blue, okay, the colors, in my opinion, to my taste, are too saturated, so it makes it look a little jarring a little too i don't know confusing um, i would have preferred a more balanced kind of neutral now one more thing to have in mind you always think about the overall composition and we will change it here the sky kind of divides the painting into two right there's the sky and then everything below once you put in a dark value on the sky like this blue you put you flatten the whole thing even more so that's one important thing to have in mind. So work on the smoothness, and I'm gonna draw it so that I have an easier time pointing at the different areas here. Um, let's do, I'm gonna open it up on my end so that I can see it. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the structure itself. That's about a third, I guess, of where it's placed. And then look at what happens. We're looking from below just because we're looking uphill. So this line is not completely vertical. It tilts a bit to the left. And that's the magic word, a bit. Okay, it's a very gentle thing. Now this line is not parallel. And you got that right. This line goes like that. Something like this. And then we have the edge of the building. Now, I don't like that this edge is so close to the to the edge of the painting, let's bring it inside a bit. And it's also going to be tilted inwards, just ever so slightly. I still am not sure whether this is still too close to the side. I'm, I'm going to bring it in just a bit, and this should continue a bit more. So that actually makes sense, like this. And then we can bring this in more something like that. Now look at what happens here. Uh, we're gonna connect a line, we're gonna draw a line that connects, see these two points on that pointy curvy edge of the building. This is quite short actually, so this is curved. This is probably the most vertical line in here. The other ones aren't. Um, one thing that I'm off on I think one two three and a half one two three and no we're good we're good maybe up to here and we're gonna use these two lines connect these find the center draw a line up and that's where that top is gonna be right and then we'll draw another line look at how these lines are not parallel right So these lines share a vanishing point because they're parallel to one another in reality, by the way. Uh, just a bit of perspective knowledge for you. Now, here's what I'm going to change, right? So we have the two chimneys. Let's get those in just one second. I don't like that this is so close to this height. And this it overlaps here. I really dislike that. So we're going to lower it a bit. We're going to have it go through here. Continue, continue, continue. And go up like that makes more sense I think personally I may be mistaken 
make this a little taller. And yeah, this this is fantastic composition. It's such a pretty scene to be honest. Really like it. Now look at this line. That's a parallel line. That's the bottom. Or maybe it should be here. That's the bottom of that uh, chimney. That goes like this. That goes like that. And that's gonna widen this shape actually. And this is gonna somewhere around here. Don't forget this follows the shape of the roof, which is why it's diagonal. And then these lines, and then this continues same height. So it's gonna be around here. And this goes here, down, and we sort of got this structure in. I think strong shadow here, and you always have to think composition. What's the composition? What's the main story? And these, of course, laundry thingies are going to be very important. Now I like how in your painting you show them lighter thanks to the grass that's darker from behind. That's really important. Now how do they work? I have to draw them a little more accurately. So it's almost like there's this fence or something. And these are here. I'm going to try and get a few of these just to get the pattern and then we'll, we'll figure out the rest. So this goes here bunch of floats from different heights that's a very important part here and I'm not trying to draw each and every one of these stumps or lines what I want is to get the main idea of clothes hanging right and blanket here whatever stripes like that and it's a couple of rows which is very important vary it up Right, don't repeat the same shapes, uh, which you did a good job with. I think you went very accurate here on the drawing. You tried at least. I'm gonna make the, the laundry even more random actually here. Um, I just wanna open up your painting again. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna make it a little more random and notice how it continues and kind of goes over obstructing some of the house. And then there's maybe another row, okay? The rest I can figure out while I paint. Now, how do I get all of these aligned? Draw a line, and then have everything reach up to it and it only. Things at this angle tend to get squeezed a little tighter, so don't have a window this wide. It's just not gonna happen. The windows are gonna be thin, thinner than you think usually, by the way. And I'm also, I'm very prone to falling into these uh, illusions just like this. So we're on the same uh, boat here. <laughs> there we go. I'm getting hungry. I think I'll eat right after the stream. I tend to do that. Um, and I think we're ready to paint. I think that's good. Maybe let's lower this here. Kind of like that. This looks really nice upside down. I'm seeing the other painting now. Um, I think we're good. I think we're ready to go. So I'm gonna follow the colors I see here. Um, I'm gonna try and match them. So already from the beginning, we're making a decision. Let's follow the values and colors we see. Let's keep the sky kind of a muted yellowish thing. Let's have the grass be the darkest element. By the way, this laundry should go all the way to the edge, I think. Closer to it, maybe. Let's see. We'll figure it out. Um, it's better to have a proper plan, but I'm 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 okay. I'm, I kind of feel like painting a little looser today. You know, painted a lot of tight works recently. Um, there we go. You can hear it in my voice, probably how I'm kind of looking for those uh, more m mellow, loose scenes in a way. So I'm gonna start as always with what I've got on the palette. Now, one way to approach this is to do an initial wash that covers everything and yellows it up. Um, I think that could be a wise choice here. That's a good question. Let's tr let's practice mixing a few of the colors. I barely do this, but I think it could be fun. Let's try it out. Let's be a little more meticulous here. And it's very hard because I am matching from my monitor, so it's not ideal, but I think the sky looks something like that. The green, I'm gonna start with what I have, which is French Ultramarine. Um, 
Indian yellow and a bit of my Chronacridone rose. So that's not green. We're going to have to add a bit more of the yellow and blue. And that gets us close. I'm going to add a bit more yellow. It's not going to be perfect, but I'm trying to hit something that is similar and still makes use of our very basic palette. Right? Uh, that I think could work here. I think that could work. Now let's try mixing that blue here. It's fairly muted, so uh, for the roof and all of that. That's very. Uh, I think I'll add a bit of purple to that. And of course, that don't do what I'm doing right now because I'm trying to match from a monitor that never works really. Um, print the photo. I didn't want to print it out. I don't know why. Felt a little clogged on my desk, but next time I probably will. Um, yeah, so I think I got an idea. I think I know what I'll do. Uh, and then maybe for the doors and windows and laundry, I'm going to use a bit more of the phthalo blue. I think we're fine. I think we're good to go. Um, let's use a bigger brush this time. I'm going to use my Escoda uh, 16 Ultimo Mop. Um, I want to try it out. It's not much bigger, but I am actually looking for a small difference here. And we'll start by mixing our neutral yellow-ish for the sky. And I'm going to start this time from a fairly wet mixture. And let me move this a bit so you can see what I'm doing. And after this painting, we're going to look at the chat a bit more. So sorry about that. Um, but yeah, hopefully, Hank, you can uh, work off of the feedback I just gave you. Um, there's a lot to improve and, and a lot of questions to ask yourself. What are you trying to achieve? Where are you trying to go with your paintings, right? That's a big question. And you need to be able to, with time, answer it. Once you have an answer for that, it's going to be much easier to create the type of work you want. Now, Sky, I don't care much. Just get it light just get the value light there we go that's our sky now i'm gonna work this first layer all of prima i feel like doing something that covers everything up that's gonna be our blue you can get fairly light and then as we get to uh, the walls, I'm going to go back to my yellow from earlier. Clean it up a bit. Because the walls aren't that yellow. It's such a muted color there. The only thing that's not muted is the laundry. Yeah, that's going to work. That's OK. Um, and then the grass. So it's very important to not just have blue and green here, but add that red. Because what you did, I think, is you went very strong on the green and gives it this, you know, especially with the very strong blue sky. It's a little too much. Yeah, that should work. Now that's fairly muted, so that's what I'm, what I'm gonna use for the background. And then as I move closer, I'm gonna increase my yellow a bit and potentially blue as well. The one thing to pay attention to here is those highlights and laundry. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let everything touch here. And as we get to the laundry, I'm just gonna paint around it probably. Goes back down. Maybe there's one thing here, but I'm going to take this opportunity while things are still wet. And I'm going to get a bit of that downhill pattern. Maybe it's um, a road or something within the mountainside, something like that. Not sure, actually, but we're going to paint it. Sorry if my voice is a little weak. I'm actually talking a little um, softer than usual. I don't know why. Just in that mood. Um, and 
let's go over this here. Let's close off this corner. Now here I see a bit of blue. Let's add a bit of phthalo blue here. I don't know why I see a bit of a stronger blue in this corner. Almost a phthalo-ish kind of blue than a bit of yellow individually. Just to show, you know, this grass is closer. It's more brighter. That's going to be a shirt or whatever. That's going to be a bit more water. Get through here, here. A bit more yellow. A bit more phthalo. Mm. There we go. That you see that layer in between is really important because that tells you that there is a layer of laundry behind. That's really important. And look at how this is very wet. It's gonna seep in. I'm fine with that. It's not the end of the world. It's gonna be another group here. And I think we're good. So that's going to be our first wash. And I think that makes sense. Um, this could be a little more green. It's, it's going to dry a, a lot lighter. But I may decide to keep it that way. Because it's very soft, you know. Compared to the house. It's just a soft area. Um, and this is... I think this is going to be dark enough to, to carry us through the painting. I think so. I think it will... Things look much more um, muted on, on the camera, actually. It's, it's a little more colorful here from where I'm looking. So I'm going to give this a few seconds to dry, uh, and then we're going to continue with the next washes, which are going to be quite straightforward, you're, you're going to see. It's a pretty simple painting in a way. Um, so let's see here. Uh, Born Again Farm Girl, gotta go, level. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, really appreciate it. Hey Shanze, how are you doing? Uh, it's hard to paint paintings which have very uh, less shadows. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the thing is about this, it does have clear shapes, Shanze. So that's that plays in our in our favor a lot. Uh, the clear shapes here really help. James, yeah, the middle picture roof of the cottage home is so indicative of a New England uh, USA seven. Uh, hmm. 1700s architecture? Interesting, this one. <laughs> uh, Ayla says, hi, from Turkey. Olivier, this little house is a big washing machine. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think yellow wash is clever. Yeah, yeah, I like that. So you look at the sky and you think to yourself, oh, it's blue, right? The sky's blue. It's actually not. That's just an il illusion. And you have to see against it, you know, see kind of through it. It's not always easy. Um, I'd like to know the software you use as to Born Again Farm Girl, uh, which you have to go through, you'll wa watch it later, hopefully. Uh, the software you use to switch between cameras on your live streams, OBS, that's the one. And you can bring in a few uh, video sources and use those. Uh, Leah, the white spaces are what I have trouble with and why I picked the white barn. I want to see your process with that one. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, this one... This is the same concept, right? It's it can also give a bit of trouble um, painting around the laundry. So that's it's something you can learn from this process too. I think top one is too obvious. Uh, white Reza, I unsubscribed. No, I I lost. Oh, because I didn't choose what you wanted. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for anyone I disappointed. Uh, but yeah, this I like. I like the feel of it because it's clearly like actual film right um old grainy you can tell it's it's it, it's probably i don't want to say it wasn't taken by a pro i actually really like this picture but this photo but it's really and by the way these lines should be flatter i messed that up a bit um but it really is an interesting i guess has this old photo quality to it right that's the only thing i can say uh, let me start working on the laundry. We don't even have to dry this. We can start working on some other details uh, while the rest dries. So we're going to get started here with a bit of pink clothing items. Now, this is where it is important to bring in saturation because clothes aren't a natural thing. They're human made. So that's where you will see some very unnatural colors and that's, believe it or not, our brains actually 
see that and interpret it as, oh, so this is closed. Actually how it works, funny enough. Now, try and be kind of clever if you can, and you can save time and effort by painting multiple items. So let's say this is blue, this is blue as well, so we use the same blue. Let's say that striped thing here is that same blue, so we would go like that, right? Um, and then maybe this thing is blue here. And then switch over to Thalo, because Thalo blue is even more artificial, and this will, I think, give the feel we're after. See, there's this very dark thing to the front. And, and you know, you can try vary the value as well. Some clothing items are darker than others. Let's do another striped one. Let's get this here. It's a very basic color, so it makes it look quite old, I guess. Um, definitely avoid the green, the same green that we have for the dress for now. Uh, let's do a bit of a more muted yellowy kind of thing here. Something like that. And I like to have close to one another, you know, blue, yellow, red. I think that always looks good. Um, a bit of that yellow here. And definitely can go back to some of that pure red from earlier. Maybe this here, make a separation between that and the thing in the front. Maybe this small thing here. Um, let's actually mix a bit of green with the more artificial phthalo and see if we can get away with getting one of these to be a little, oops, a little bit more green but artificial and different from the grass. Maybe we can get away with that. Um, but you see most of the colors are very, um, very simple reds and blues. And I think I'll leave a few of these whites. Um, maybe do a striped one here. Or maybe a pattern like this. Right? Something like that. Yeah, and I think that that does the trick somewhat. And we can, let's dry this now. Let's dry this and then work on the roof. Okay, just give me one second. I'm gonna mute you, mute myself. Good, so I think it's dry enough. I want to I want you to notice note something here. The fact that we decided to start with a wash that's kind of flowy, that actually led to an unplanned but very desired result where this line right here, can you see how much it just blended together into the building? And that makes sure we don't have too hard of an edge right near the near the end of the scene. Uh, and I think that looks quite good. I think that was a clever decision. Um, more clever than I thought it would be. Uh, so it's not thanks to me, it's just luck. Now I'm gonna change the light. I wanna see if a different type of light will show the colors more accurately. I think that's actually more accurate, funny enough, and it's a terrible blue light, but let's keep it like that for a while. Sorry if it's, no, you know what, I'm not sure. It's weaker, that's the problem with it. Okay, we'll leave it like that. Now, I'm gonna work on the roof same way in one go. Now, you used a bit of uh, yellow there, Hank, I think that yellow stands out a little too much, so I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with a gray and change into a blue and do wet in wet for some details. That's it for the roof. So let's start by mixing a gray. Once again, I'm gonna use whatever I got. Then I'm gonna add a bit of that blue here. Maybe a bit of the phthalo, you know what? This scene looks more like phthalo to me. Then a bit of red and lastly a bit of yellow. And now this is where I have to use my test paper because I'm always bad at judging grays. 
and when I was able to reach a gray mix. So this gets close, but it's still a bit green, I think, which means I'm gonna need a bit more red. Still green. Now it looks brown, so a bit more blue. And I think this is closer. I think that's good. So we're gonna start with that and then change to a very muted, I guess, phthalo-ish kind of thing here. There we go. Now look at what happens and start small, because that really helps you have control. Look at what happens here on the left hand side, on the left wall. It's just, it just fades. It's kind of a gray that fades into the wall. So we're gonna try and recreate that effect by coming back with some water and blending that edge. I know it looks a little strong, but don't worry, it's gonna, um, it's gonna dry lighter. Now I can add a bit of water to make it lighter and also to give it a wear down kind of look, maybe. And then I'm gonna do the same for this one just to save on mixing time. Uh, so I'm gonna use that same mix here. Kind of like that. You'll notice how around the top it gets a little darker. I'm gonna put that in just a second. First, we're gonna move on to the roof. Now, because this is a glaze over a more yellowy kind of wash, I need, I can afford to have the green a little stronger. Uh, not the green, the blue a little stronger. I think that will work actually. Let's give it a try and see what happens. Yeah, that looks okay. And look what I'm doing, one go, letting this mix together. That's a big part of the beauty of watercolor. The more you can allow the paint to do that, honestly, the better. I'm gonna add a bit of blue here, near the bottom. I feel like I wanna make that shadow a little more blue. And then we're gonna come back with a wet brush, soften that up. So do it again, usually you will have to do it twice. Good, I was scared for a second, you can't hear me. Okay, here we go. And now quickly, before this dries fully, I'm gonna come back with stronger, darker paint, just to get a bit of that detail like this. And here I'm going to need a bit of a darker blue. That's a little too late on the timing. But we we'll, we can pull it off. Or not. Maybe we should. I think that will work. Like so. Here. So it dries really fast because it's a second layer. So I wanted to do this wet and wet, but I'll have to wait, I think, this because this is really almost dry. So I either come back with very dry paint, or we let this dry, or I can spray a bit and hope for the best. Let's be a little impatient and spray a bit, instead of letting this dry. Ah, that's okay. Now I'm going to do the doors and windows. You see we're really picking up the pace. So, strong phthalo blue here. And look at what I'm doing. I'm going to put this blue. Strong blue, much stronger here. So, and then I'm gonna use some black on the frame to get the darker spots. Like that. And that's one. Okay, and it's gonna dry. Uh, once it dries, it'll make a lot more sense. Now the other window and then the door. So the door in just one second. And this color does lose a lot of its vibrance 
um, when you go dark with it, phthalo blue. Um, that's just the reality of watercolor. You can make a deliberate decision to make it lighter if you really want to maintain, I guess, the original strength of it. Uh, but you don't have to. You know, that's fine. And the door is lighter. That's a light phthalo. So let's see. And again, because this is the second layer, things dry a little weird and unevenly. So I'm doing my best to combat that. But things here already start to dry. It's pretty crazy, actually, how fast it dries right now. This entire thing is in the shadow, I mean. Right here. And there's this, you know, window on the door which looks quite nice and i think this is good we'll let this dry and see what happens um, right now it's a bit hard to say for sure but i think it looks pretty close to the original actually there is some texture on the walls which i may add later on may not and one thing we can add right now uh, actually is these details on the laundry stuff the stumps and whatnot so a bit of dark brown neutral kind of color Let's see what this looks like. I need it to be a little more brown. And quite dark. Just using my test paper here to the side. Okay, I think that's good. And even with these kinds of details, you want to get them as simply as you can, if possible, in one go. See, it has to be cooler. That's too brown. I messed that up. There's one here that leans against something, so that looks neat. And then maybe you can show the tippy top of these other stumps. And maybe give a hint of a rope or wire. Like so. lighten it up a bit. I'm not even sure what that is, but I guess that's what just the structure made of wood. Sometimes it's not a good idea to to paint something without knowing what it is, and sometimes it is. I'm not sure which what it is right now. Maybe I should know what it is, I guess. Another stump here. And we're good, I think. I think we're gonna let this dry and see what happens. Um, you can strengthen some of the contrast with the grass, so I may do another layer on top of that. Um, that's, I think, the main weakness right now that I may want to address. It's going to make everything else pop, but the question is at what price? The question is what do we give up by doing that? That's something to think about, because you are giving up on something if you do that. There is a bit of this gentle thing here. I'm inaccurate today. I don't know what it is, but yeah, that's, that's good. No, that's not good. <laughs> I don't like this line. I placed it wrong, or I don't know. Let's see here. Let's get rid of it. Like so, do our best, and then get a better, more accurate one going. It should reach up to here. There we go. I think it will work out. Well, let's see what you're saying in the chat. Um, oh, not too much. Good. Um, is that a photograph too small on my table, I guess? Um, yeah, it's a photograph. It looks a bit like a painting, though. Hey, Chris, how are you? Good morning from Northern California. I'm a little late. Looks great. Thank you. Hey, Banani. Uh, I learned great to be able to see you painting this. And thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Um, I think I'll strengthen it up. I think we're going to glaze over the green as we tend to. Now, it's not necessarily that I'm that inaccurate. This time it's more a matter of choice. And I do feel like it's going to improve the look here. So, we'll do it. I don't have to, actually, this time. But I feel like it'll look a little better. So, let's see what we have here. That's too anemic. 
give it some more strength. I'm gonna use Phalo this time. And I'm gonna add, and it's gonna be a relatively thin blade. I'm not going too dark here. And I actually like some of the looser edges, so we may pre-wet. Let's see. I'm gonna pre-wet this section. So we're gonna get a soft edge there. The rest can stay hard, I think. And let's see what we get here. We're starting with a bit of a brownish red in it. But as I move closer, and I know it looks super strong, don't worry. I'm gonna get much uh, lighter later on. But as we go down and closer, I'm gonna change it up. And let's see. I know it looks very strong. Now, I may be mistaken, but based on my experience, it should be the right value. And you really have to kind of ignore what you see and do it the way you know. And I can feel what, what's, um, what ratio of water to paint I mixed, and I can tell that it should be good. And one area I'll probably won't touch is the left section, so I have to figure out what I'm going to do as I get there. <laughs> Actually, uh, I'm going to need to mix a bit more, which you never want to have to do, but that's fine. Will give us an opportunity to crank up the phthalo as we did before. Went a little over that blanket, that's fine. Uh, get a bit of a stronger contrast here with the bottom of the building. And that's it. Now I'm go not gonna be as a uh, coward and lighten this up, but I will spray a bit on it. That's it. I'm not gonna be a coward, I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna touch this, even though I know it looks dark. Give it a few seconds. It's gonna dry lighter. And I think my um, gamble is gonna work out here. I think. We'll see. Um, yeah, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. It's gonna be okay. Once it dries, it'll kind of fade into the background. My camera really exaggerates contrasts too. Uh, so I'm gonna, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna let this dry. I think then we'll start moving towards wrapping it up, which means I will remove the tape together with you. We're gonna take a few photos um, and I'm gonna share with you a proper photo. Um, that way you're, you're gonna see the colors a little better or I'll just scan it and show you later. Hank, uh, L amazing and thank you so much. Uh, Seth with you soon. Oh yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I wasn't sure if you're here or not. Um, hopefully that gives you some direction, right? Uh, it's not a complete answer, but hopefully it helps. Uh, and, and again, that flow, you have to pay attention to the flow. Kathy Mog, first time watching live for me. Thank you for helping me learn. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for being here. So you basically get to see what uh, insanity the watercolor process is, as always. Uh, a lot of mistakes and you have to kind of navigate them and roll with the punches again. Uh, James, only run. I don't know if you saw my question earlier, but what paints are you currently using? It's a mix and match, but basically uh, I used in the beginning more uh, ultramarine blue when on rose and Indian yellow. And then for that second wash, I used a bit more phthalo, okay? Let me dry this with a hairdryer because I'm impatient to see what it's gonna look like. Uh, this is, oh man, should have left it like it was, right? That's too strong. Let me, let me see. I'm gonna dry this and come back, one sec. So let's turn this into a learning experience. It actually lightened up a bit, but it's too dark. Let's, one of the things I talk about in the watercolor realism course is the lightening up large areas. Let's see if we can lighten it up using opaque paint, because I don't show this a lot. 
and it's still a technique I'm kind of learning, but I, I, I wanted to ask if you want me to try that, but I think people will prefer that, because to me it's too strong. It was good before that, and I blew it, so that's, you learn from my mistakes. But let's use that as an opportunity to see how to lighten things up with a picnic. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use my John Brilliant Shin, uh, Shinhan PWC. That's kind of an opaque yellowish white that has uh, interesting qualities. So look at what I'm doing. I'm mixing it with the green I had here. And I'm gonna add a bit of yellow. Now warning, keep this limited to uh, a specific well because uh, opaque paint really is, can look a little aggressive on the palette and it can feel like it's taking over the other well. So just letting you know, do this in a contained manner, that's better. Now again, this is a technique I'm far from mastering, so we're gonna have to mix a bit and figure out what's going on on paper. Because what I want to do is lighten this wash up. Even though it's not the end of the world, I'm gonna try. Now the thing with opaque paint, it's it works the same way, but reverse. So things dry lighter, opaque paint dries darker. So it's gonna look the lightest once you apply it, and then it's gonna gradually take a step back. So let's examine this. This is way, way, way too dark. So I'm gonna add more of my yellow, because as I said, it's gonna dry uh, darker. It's gonna dry darker. So we have to start from a point where it feels almost too light. Let me show you. See this? This feels a little too light. Right? So let's see what will happen here, actually. And it will depend on, again, as how much color you mix in with it and how much water you mix in. So do you see how it lightens it up? It kind of masks what was there. Right now it's the lightest probably it's gonna look. And in a few seconds, as this starts to dry, it's gonna go back to being darker. The question is how much lighter it's gonna be compared to before we applied it, right? Will it take it in the right direction? Um, I think it's just a fun opportunity to test the technique. I'm nowhere near to being a master at it. And it does turn things a little milky, right? If you don't put enough color in it, and I'm kind of just going crazy at this point. Uh, but we do have documentation of before I added that um, before I added that uh, darker wash that was excessive. So we're good. We're still good. Yeah. Now I'm getting lazy. Let me add a bit more green to it. I think it's a, just a fun opportunity to test it out. Um, see, it's very opaque, right? It feels different than what we're used to. You feel that it's opaque. So it's very interesting for me to see this always because I'm so not accustomed to using opaque mediums. So yeah, let's kind of let this do its thing. Let's give it a few seconds. I'm even gonna spray a bit on it. Don't know what it will do, but we'll try it out. I'm just curious to see if it will lighten it up the right way. So I do feel like it got it closer to the right value. And again, it's gonna dry darker. You're gonna see this darken as we continue talking, which is fascinating because it's the reverse uh, of non-opaque paint. And some of you may have gotten the chance to use this, but um, but the color now is more off, right? It's more milky, it's kind of more of a muted green. That's fine. I wanted to see if it will make it a little lighter. So let's let this dry and start concluding. I think actually we can remove the tape off of, oh, we can't, we have to remove the tape off of this one first. So that's what we're gonna do in just a second. So a couple of things to note, right? I did not do anything close to a perfect job, but one thing that I do feel like I have is a plan, a solid plan to get the message I want, right? These are scenes I wouldn't have painted myself. So it's scenes that challenge me, I'm unaccustomed to them. But I just wanna show you how you can take this, right, the way it looks and really follow it. Notice the pattern, the sky, it's light, right? It's the eye of the painting, Joseph Zbukovic likes to say. <coughs> and then everything below it is kind of dark except for the walls. And everything has this yellow tint, so I knew right out the gate. Now you made some changes, which again, is completely acceptable. If I would have changed the color of the sky, I would have gone for a pale blue, not a strong, strong ultramarine. You put a strong ultramarine next to a very strong, shouty green, right? And 
trying to render every detail in the foliage, just treat it as one big shape. Same for the sky here in the previous example, one big shape, right? Try and see the painting as one, two for the green, three, four, and that's it, right? Um, that's kind of my advice, I would say, generally speaking, okay? Uh, hopefully you got to see this through. Uh, it's not gouache, it's just watercolor, uh, new, new, new Agitech or new Agitech. It's, it's just watercolor, but it's uh, slightly more opaque, okay? Technique with white paint is a very good tip. Yeah, I, I need to figure it out more. I actually have a few cool ideas for it. Um, it could be used more like in a pinch if you mess things up and you really need to lighten something. Um, but it can also be used in a non-gimmicky way, I think, to create interest in effects. So that's something I'm still exploring, honestly. Um, but yeah, um, should I just darken this, uh, just dry this using the hair dryer and then remove? I think that's what we're gonna do. So let me, and I think it got closer to the right uh, value, definitely. We needed to lighten it up, I'm sure of it. Um, so at least it got closer to the, to the optimal value. When I squint, it does look close to the reference, actually. All of it looks close, so I like that a lot. And I like the look. It's very unique, very different from my usual stuff because it's opaque paint and because it's a scene I wouldn't normally paint. Uh, Hank, I do hope you found this useful, though. Uh, I try doing my best. So let me mute you for a few seconds, dry this, we'll remove both the painting's tapes and we'll conclude. Yeah, so I think it's dry enough to remove the tape. One thing that you could add if you want to see, this line's a little stronger. You can even do this with a pencil, but just kind of get that separation a little stronger. And by the way, people ask me a lot about pencil. This is not gonna be uh, erasable because you paint it over it. As soon as you paint over it, you can't erase it. I like it, again, as the, the rougher the, the, the process is and kind of the way I sketch, the more excessive pencil lines are gonna be. So for the more careful stuff, I do use fewer pencil lines generally. Um, but just kind of to let you know, I like the pencil. It doesn't bother me at all. I actually really like the way it turns out. I, this one looks really unique. It's, I, I don't think I have any painting that looks close to that. Um, so that's fine. So we're gonna remove the tape off of the first one. It's gonna be a nice frame because uh, it's full of paint, right? All the way to the edges. The tape really survived somehow. Uh, this stream has been really funny. And, oh, that's why this. Why did that happen? I got a bit of a blot. Probably touched it without noticing earlier. No biggie. There we go. Almost gone. And I'm gonna remove it. Uh, let's set this one aside for a second. This, this stream, I feel like I personally have been all over the place. I don't know, it's weird, because I haven't painted in a while live for you. It's been the critique, so I'm so used to being, being verbal and not painting. It's, it's an interesting experience always. Um, but we're going to put these two side by side. Maybe open the reference photos back again. So it's not that important. Um, I'm always trying to do something beyond the reference photo in a way. Oh, but yeah. And by the way, this is what happens when you paint a subject you're not accustomed to. It's gonna be a challenge. It's gonna be a challenge. So here we go. And it definitely was a challenge for me. But these are the two works from today. And let me, um, I think we talked enough about like tips and how to improve the original paintings. So I'm just gonna open up these and the references again. Uh, this one. No, oh, not this one. Oh, I got rid of the, the other one. Great job. Um, so that's gonna be, oh, I have here. Ref one, good, there we go. So we have this one, and this one, and this one, I'll try to show you everything together. So yeah, very interesting stream, very challenging process, is definitely challenging for me. Now it looks like I got the colors here pretty nicely. The sky, though, of course, could use some improvement. 
Let me move this here and this there. That'll make much more sense. Something like this. As I disappear behind the pile of painting. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, I really hope you found this useful. Um, mostly about my struggles, uh, which is always fun. Um, the, the painting process is messy and it's very rare that everything goes my way. Um, I will say that when you paint solo and you don't have to focus on talking and and demonstrating and is the camera working properly and are they seeing what I'm doing it's definitely a different feel to it and I and I have more control now I say this not to complain but to to express to you how focus does matter so even if you feel like you're not experienced you have a lot to improve in your art the how, how focused you are in the process does make a difference um, now as for this sky if you really want to work on skies try and isolate the subject and try to work just on a sky. If you have the full painting to think about it, it makes it harder, right? Now, uh, my, my technique could have been better, you know, the wet and wet could have started with, um, I think a bigger brush would have been, uh, would have been able to contribute to a better result in a way. Um, and I think maybe just approaching it a little more deliberately, so maybe not even pre-wetting everything, but just some, parts and to treat it like I painted clouds before to just focus on it as a subject and then move on to the next so maybe I would paint up to here and then soften the edge right and then do this wash and actually control it rather than delegate it to wet and wet because as soon as you do wet and wet you lose a lot of the control right now I should be able to have better control something I need to improve as for the big idea let's talk about that Always know what the game plan is, what area you're gonna paint. I knew that I'm gonna connect the sky to the to the structures. I didn't know I'm gonna connect it to the ground, but I knew I'm gonna connect it to the structure. So think about these things, right? <clears throat> you have to be prepared for the wash. You have to know to mix enough. You have to know, and even if you're not gonna mix enough, you'll practice the technique so much that it's easier to mix while painting, right? And I had to do that a lot today. Um, so there's a lot of things to work on, a lot of different tips that I can give you. Um, but one of the main ones I think for today would be be focused, be prepared and have a game plan, right? Um, have an idea that leads you and guides you through the painting. For me, a big thing about this painting is actually that yellow sky. It's very atmospheric, it's very old kind of film feel to it. Uh, this one I may be interested in painting again too. Um, because it has that quality to it, right? An initial wash that's just yellow, that could, muted yellow, right? Again, don't go too hard on the on the. You can a good way of looking at it is try and save your very saturated colors to small spots. Like here, it's the laundry. Here, it could be maybe next to the doors or something like that. But try and limit that unless that's the style you're going for, just shouty colors, and then you go for it, right? But if you're looking for a balance, that's one that's an aspect you may want to balance a little differently. Pay attention to the colors you mix. I haven't, so I got a lot of the uh, ultramarine blue here instead of a gray, right? Um, there's a lot to improve, a lot, always a lot to improve, and we learn in, in cycles, right? Uh, but in any case, I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me go through some of the kind of uh, final comments um, in the chat, and then we can conclude. Um, conclude uh, officially <laughs> this live stream. Uh, Josephine, well, the laundry pops after adding the opaque paint. Yeah, it popped before too, it was just too strong, you know? Um, and, and by the way, I'm missing the shadows under the laundry here, the right? I should darken right under them, that's fine. Um, uh, Tat to tank, how are you doing, my friend? What's up, Rojo? All is well? Yeah, definitely, I'm doing well, thank you so much. Uh, James says, oh, I hear you about not doing this painting normally. However, when we are done, I'm going to my studio and will attempt my interpretation. I'll Instagram you guys later. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll be curious to see it. Uh, Banani, couldn't you have used some green acrylics on top of your dark? Yeah, definitely. And that would be the same thing, acrylics, instead of opaque watercolor. Um, I want to learn to work with opaque watercolors because I just feel like it will. you can mix it with other watercolors more successfully. Um, so that's why I aim to focus a bit more on that and really master it because that should allow a wide range um, of different things. And I have seen this, 
I don't know where I saw this article talking about how a lot of the, the old masters who used watercolor used a lot of opaque paint. I mean, I should look more into that. I need to practice more. Honestly, that's that's what it comes down to. Uh, new Gatek, new Gatek. Sorry, I know I mispronounced it. My apologies. Thank you for teaching so generously. My pleasure. Uh, Hank, she says. Uh, Hank says. Uh, I hung on every word and have learned so much. I'm very happy to, to hear. I was hoping you will be able to with this session. Uh, it's kind of an added one to our session. Alessandro liked that green in the final result. It definitely has an interesting character to it. I will say that. Thank you so much, though. Uh, yeah, pencil gives interesting looks when warranted. I always sketch with uh, Lyra, Rembrandt, Graphite. I think I had a Lyra um, pencil in the past. I think I still have it here. You know what? Uh, personally, I sketch with 3B. Yeah, I like um, 6B sometimes too. That's extreme, but I like it. Uh, Sartek, why do you have to simplify it? Uh, you don't have to, but some aspects of the painting you may want to. Um, Ellen, thanks. You got it. Uh, but anyway, I like the first one a lot. Oh, thank you. Um, no one. Hey, Leron, are you an impressionist? Uh, it's hard to tell. I guess to some extent. I don't, I'm not sure though. I'm not sure how to answer that still. Uh, Jinx, agreed on the focus, quiet time, or just music. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, Patricia, my first laundry day painting. Thank you. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Olivier, uh, skilled and kind. It's Leron. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, that is one thing I am constantly working on. That will be, oh, yeah, focus. Focusing on my plan of action and knowing what I'm going to do stroke by stroke, not just painting willy nilly. Yep. Yep, that is true. And you get better at painting willy-nilly with time. It doesn't mean you always have to be like calculated and boring, right? You can always um, incorporate some of that once you feel more comfortable. Um, Ish Santos, what's a good warm-up before painting? Um, I like to fill in shapes with just unified color. So like um, just I'll draw, I'll fill in a watercolor paper and you can use a cheap one for that with different abstract shapes and just work on getting them effectively in using your brush. That's fun. Um, sometimes just to do an even wash, top to bottom, maybe change it, do a gradual transition from blue to red or something very simple. Um, I find that this kind of a thing that gets me in the mood. Sometimes also just sketching gets me in the mood to paint. Um, it's interesting. Jonah's crazy. What galleries do you recommend visiting in Israel? I moved here last year. Oh, cool. Um, I'm not too familiar with galleries. There is a really good one, and uh, I'll, I can talk from my experience about Tel Aviv. Um, Yehuda Halevi Street, there's a really good one that used to have, they, they do rotations all the time. It used to have really good impressionistic art by an Israeli Australian artist. It was really good, but I don't even remember, like, I don't even know how to explain where it is. It's Yehuda Halevi somewhere next to the junction that leads you to Harakevet Street, if you're familiar. Um, there's a pretty good one there. Uh, what my suggestion would be to just Google kind of uh, online a gallery tour Tel Aviv, uh, and then you'll you you can book a tour that shows you like five or six of them, even more, and then you know what you like and you can return there. Um, but yeah, I'm not a, I'm not I don't know much about them, and I know a lot of them closed because of COVID and stuff. Um, some of my paintings were in under a thousand gallery. I don't know if you it's a pretty famous one They had three branches closed two, left one open. It's a mess. <laughs> but these had my work. So um, I guess maybe some people want to check them. No, not anymore though. Uh, here is Ruth. She does not want to be on camera. She does not want to be here Where did my daddy <laughs> <laughs> You want to say hi to the people? Here, say hi and be gone. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> uh, okay. And Elden uh, Summers, what do you do with paintings you do on stream aren't your best? I pile them up and keep them <laughs> in the studio. Um, some do sell gradually with time, even the ones I consider not my best. Um, these I can definitely see selling in the future, but who knows? Um, this one in particular, it has a special character to it. It's very different from my rest, uh, rest of my work. Uh, but I just keep it. You know, watercolors luckily don't take up too much space and you can just pile them and put them and store them. I keep everything, uh, mostly for myself because I want the option to look at them in the future um, and to see the progress and, you know, 
um, see where I was in the past in, in my improvement, recognize different trends in my style and things I really need to work on. Like color matching is a constant one for me. These kinds of things, right? Uh, so I just keep them here in files and, and bags and folders and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, that's what I do with them. And I do encourage everyone to not throw away uh, their paintings. Um, Jonas Crazy, yeah. Uh, sorry, that, that's the best I can do, but I uh, hope I could help. Uh, everyone loves Ruth. Oh, Patricia says you uh, you also have a pile of paintings. Yep, yep, that's the life of an artist. That's just part of it. Uh, but I do think it is good timing to wrap it up. Uh, again, Hank, I hope you got something out of it. Um, I hope everyone else got something out of it. Just go with the flow. Don't worry if uh, things don't go your way. Um, it's much better to practice taking a painting from the beginning all the way till the end. Because if you give up after 10% is done because you don't like it, you just never will get to that stage of 30%, 40%, 60%. And these stages are different. They do require a different thing. And if you always quit before that, you'll never be able to practice these different things. Okay? I hope that makes sense. I do want to thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, a couple of plugs, check out the courses. Everything is in the description box below, watercolor drawing, you name it. Um, I do have um, the new Patreon tier for critiques. If you want me to one-on-one -on -one tell you what I think could be improved in your work, you can do that. Um, I have a couple of books on Amazon. If you just search for my name, you'll find it. Uh, what else do I want to plug? I think that's it. Uh, if you're new here, for some reason, you somehow was able to find the stream, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, leave a like if you can on the live stream. It will help more people find it in the next couple of days. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions by email. You can find my email on my channel. I'm pretty accessible, so I, I try and answer at least most of them. Um, I definitely miss a few, but just be, be persistent. I will answer at some point. If you have sent me an email and I haven't responded, and it's been a long time, send me another one. If it's, you know, in the last couple of days, I may return an email soon. So uh, thank you for being patient. And that's it. I think we're going to wrap it up. I will talk to you again real, real soon. Keep painting, keep practicing. That's the most important thing. And keep enjoying your art. So we will talk real, real soon.